director of the St. Louis Center for Play Therapy Training. I'm also a clinician in private practice. I work with children as young as three up to 12 years of age, and I also work closely with their parents. And sometimes we use play-based family therapy to um, help solve problems, help families feel more connected. One of the techniques that I like to use with families is one I created myself, and it's called the family quilt. I have a sample of a quilt that I like to bring in and share with families. I love old quilts. Uh, grew up in families where quilts were pretty much a mainstay. What's unique about them, in my opinion, is that quite often, especially patchwork or scrap quilts, they're made from pieces of fabrics that came from clothing worn by family members. So we might have grandma's dress, we might have a piece of dad's necktie, those types of things. So putting them together, stitching it together represents how a family is sort of all connected and each part of the family brings something to the whole family unit. So with that concept in mind, what I like to do with a family that comes to work with me, quite often they have a problem they want to solve and they're so focused on the problem that perhaps they've lost sight of some of the positive qualities about their family. What I will do is give each family member a piece of poster board or card stock. It needs to be something a little heavier than just um, regular paper. These squares are eight by eight. You could use six by six, 10 by 10, whatever size you wanted to use. So let's say we had a family of four, so I would give each person one. If you only had a family of two, perhaps each person could do two, or a family of three, each person could give could do two. You want to be able to have an even number of uh, amount of squares to um, tape it together once they decorated their quilt squares to make their family quilt. So the directive I would give them is give each member a, a square and decorate it. We could use markers, we could use paint, colored pencils, crayons, stickers, old magazine pictures, whatever medium you wanted to use, and have them decorate their quilt piece so that it represents who they are and what they bring to their family. So each person works on theirs independently. After they're finished, we would get down on the floor and we would, much like you would put a puzzle together, we'd line all the squares up face down on the floor. Once they're all in position, take some uh, shipping tape, clear tape, or masking tape. Regular um, adhesive tape is probably not gonna work. You're gonna want something a little bit wider and then um, tape all of the, the squares together. So a little difficult to show you here, but just to kind of give you an idea, if the designs were on this side, we would lay it face down on the floor and then put the piece of tape on the floor to connect them, which is really easy to do if you lay it on the floor or even on a table, but they're all connected. Once you get them all taped together and enlist the whole family to do that, then we flip it over and let's say it was the Brown family would say, let me introduce you to the Brown family quilt. Then we turn it all over and each person shares what they put on their particular square. Other family members can make comments, they can ask questions. Once they've all shared their square, then I would ask them, if someone walked into the room who didn't know anything about your family, what would they learn about your family by looking at your family quilt? Or if your quilt had a title, it had a name, what name would it be? What would they give it? It really does help them see the positiveness of their family, all the particular strengths that each family member has and what they contribute to it. Another variation of the family quilt that I've used is if the family has lost a loved one to, say, death, maybe even incarceration, they each would make a quilt square that, that represents their positive, fond, happy memories of that person that's no longer a part of their family. So it becomes more of a memory quilt. So a similar concept just with a different purpose and a different end result. If you like that idea and you want to learn a little bit more uh, about the details of how I use it, I was privileged and honored to have Leona Lowenstein include my family quilt technique in her book Assessment and Treatment Activities for children, adolescents, and families. You can go to lianalowenstein.com and you can order this book directly from her. It has lots of wonderful techniques submitted by um, clinicians who work with children and families. I hope you like this idea. It's one that I find to be fun to facilitate. 
I've always had really positive responses from families that have used it. And once it's finished, um, they get to take it home with them. And I ask that they hang it in a place in their home where everyone can see it and they can um, talk about it from time to time as well. And with client's permission, um, it's in my informed consent for treatment, I do um, ask them if it's okay if I take a picture of it, because I like to include that photo in, in their clinical notes. It helps me kind of be mindful of the family as well. And sometimes we can pull that photo out and maybe revisit it from time to time if that would be relevant in the course of work that we do with the family. So I hope you like the family quilt. I hope you use it. And I hope you connect with me. You can find me on various social media platforms, but the easiest way to find me is go to stlplaytherapy.com and all the social media buttons are on there. I hope to connect with you soon.